Guten Tag, my name is DMAD, and in this video, we return to the David Trailer Zoo of Emporia. Lately, I've been wanting to add more themes to Backtrack, so in this episode, we are examining the pros and cons of the David Trailer Zoo to see if it is worthwhile stopping for on a road trip. Now, keep in mind, I love the David Trailer Zoo, but say that you are on a road trip from Kansas City to Wichita. You're on I-35 and are passing through Emporia, Kansas. You read about a little zoo that doesn't take too long to get through. Should you visit it? Well, let's get into it. Starting with the most obvious factor, time. In general, if you only do one loop around the park, it would take less than an hour. However, I-35 running through Emporia does land on the Kansas Turnpike, which is a toll road. So although it may not be an issue for some, if you're continuing on the turnpike to I-335, you do have to get off, pay, and then we'll have to get another ticket when you get back on the highway. So really, it depends on which direction you're coming from. But on top of that, the zoo is about a 10 minute drive from the interstate, so it's just a little out of the way, but not too bad. Moving on to price. Admission to the zoo costs a whopping free 99 Why do they say 99 I get it sounds like $3.99, but that... Sounds too much like $3.99, sounds like it actually costs something, but anyways, the zoo doesn't cost anything. I think the only thing that costs money is their concession stand, so price shouldn't be a concern. Now for the main draw of any zoo, the animals. Starting with the low points, obviously due to its size, there are no iconic species, so no lions, gorillas, giraffes, or rhinos. However, they do have numerous exotic and endangered species. They also have rescue animals, a variety of birds and small mammals, and an area dedicated to the North American flyway. But aside from their expedition Madagascar, there's no real dedicated area to a specific continent or taxa. Also a field that they excel in is gardening. The zoo has a rainbow's worth of flowers and other plants that come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and planting layouts. However, I personally have only seen it at its height in summer, so I can't speak for what the park looks like in other seasons. Another brief thing to bring up is other things to do in town. There is an all-veterans memorial across the street from the zoo, and I am aware of parks and other historic attractions, but I'm not an expert on the matter, so I would recommend checking out websites like EmporiaKansas.gov or visit Emporia.com to learn more. Now, after all this, the final topic I want to go over is how all of these subjects fit into a road trip versus a day trip. For a road trip, you obviously have more time. Unless you're keeping a strict schedule, the zoo makes a nice side quest and a good place to stretch your legs, learn, and see something new. Emporia is also a good place to get gas, eat, and see some other stuff while you're in town. However, if you're doing a day trip dedicated to visiting a separate attraction, it may be harder to find the time. The zoo opens at 10 a.m. and closes at 4.30 p.m. So unless the day trip isn't too long and you expect to get there with time to spare, it may not be the best addition. Final thoughts. The David Trailer Zoo of Emporia makes for a worthwhile stop if you have the time, but can be avoided if you have a schedule to keep. And with that, I think we're done here. I hope you enjoyed this more topic-focused video of Backtrack, and stay tuned for the next episode and other videos. But if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel, as well as following us on our other social media platforms. And share this video out to anyone who may be thinking about visiting Emporia, Kansas, or just zoos and animals in general. I thank you all for watching, and remember, always be prepared, do good daily, and love nature. For your life is a canvas, and you have the brush. Auf Wiedersehen!